Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about wires, different types of wires, specifically Romex wires. So stick around. Got a wire uh, new residential construction. Okay, so a little bit of history about wires today. Um, We'll go through the different types of Romex wires. So first of all, Romex is a brand out of the U.S. Um, it's a dry rated cable used for wood construction only. It's also referred to as NMD 90 wire or non-metallic dry wire up here in Canada. So there are a variety of different types of wires that we have here in front of us. Um, and we're going to go through each kind. So a little history about wiring. Uh, basically, uh, in the 40s and 50s, we all know what the word knob and tube is. So knob and tube was basically two wires that were separated by a joist cavity in between joists, and they had the neutral running on one side and the hot running on one on the other side. So that was separated. The reason they called it knob and tube is because it used to hang on knobs, porcelain knobs, and it used to go through tubes when it would go through a joist cavity. And typically they would run one circuit from um, the basement right up through the center of the house and do all of the lighting circuit and plugs. Now this was uh, typically a 10 gauge and it was a copper steel mix, um, basically a really heavy duty wire and it was coated with a cloth. And the problem with this wire over time, when it was exposed to heat from a light fixture, uh, it, it got dry and brittle and cracked not to mention that uh, one of the other issues was if it was got, if it got wet it was destroyed so knob and tube believe it or not is still actually legal in in the code book providing that it's protected properly so it needs to be on a proper 15 amp fuse or breaker with gfci protection however the insurance companies or most insurance companies want that wire gone thing of the past which is why you hear the horrid word knob and tube and insurance companies will drop you. So throughout the, uh, the 40s and the 50s or the late 30s and the 40s and the 50s, they transitioned to a wire that was ungrounded. It was, uh, it was a metallic wire, a dry wire, and it was still made with cloth. And inside of that cloth wire, there were two cloth conductors. So they brought the two knob and tube wires together without a ground. So what that did was that uh, made it safer, but you still had the same situation where you had cloth wires inside and it, it was inside of a cloth wire that would run through, uh, through like a normal wire would. Now, the problem with that is it actually made the problem a little bit worse because the, two, the wire itself would come down into a light fixture. At the time, it was incandescent light fixture, so the light fixture would build up, the, build up the heat, dry out the wire, and make it really, really brittle. So this ended up causing a number of issues, um, especially when it was overfused and could draw too much. So throughout the 50s, they tried a number of different things towards the end of the 50s and into the 60s. And listen, guys, I'm not 100% certain of these dates. This is just from my 20-some years of experience. You know, I don't know if it was 1963 or whatever it was, but basically um, they decided to transition to a Romex or an NMD7. Um, and that was basically uh, a, a rubber coat of wire. They tried a number of things. A rubber coat of wire where they brought it together and it was, uh, it was ungrounded. That didn't work, so they changed the type of uh, NMD7 and they went uh, into the 60s. They went to... Uh, a cloth wire with a wax coating and inside of that was uh, the first copper conductors or the real good copper conductors that had rubber around them. There's still a lot of that in, in homes today. It's still legal as providing that it would that it is properly protected at the panel source. And then they went on to add the ground wire. Uh, the ground wire was put in the center of these two conductors and the, for a number of years they called it an MD7 and they, some of it was gray and some of it was green and depending on the application it was still 14 and 12 too mostly at the time. Now we're into the 60s and, and uh, early I'd say the late 60 period. 
So from there, um, in the early 70s, they got the bright idea that aluminum would be a better idea, and they switched the wire to aluminum, which did not last long because the problem with the aluminum conductor, um, it just melted. It was too soft. It wouldn't work on devices. Now, we still use aluminum on bigger size conductors, but all of your smaller conductors, 10, 12, and 14, need to be a copper conductor. So they went back to the NMD7 in the late 70s, um, and a lot of it is still in people's homes today. It is grounded. It is good wire. I actually think in some cases it's better wire than the new NMD with the, the white coating. Um, and the reason I think that is because it was prone to mice chewing on it. It didn't, it, you wouldn't have any problems with mice chewing on it. However, once it was wet, it was done. So once they come out with the actual NMD in the 80s, um, or Romex, as you refer to it, a lot of the older stuff had uh, paper coating inside, and you have your, your, your hot and your ground on the end. Like you can see, I'll show it up close here. You have your hot and your ground along with your, um, along with your ground. Now the problem with this conductor and the problem with it still today is that it has a soy base in the insulation jacket of the wire. This soy base is very tasty to mice and rodents. So even today we still have problems with mice chewing on these wires. So there's your little bit of history. Um, basically we'll go through the different types of Romex and what the colors mean. So first of all, we have the 14-2 conductor. Uh, it comes in a Romex or comes in an NMD90, non-metallic dry, rated for 300 volts. This is your standard white host wire, and this is what we use. It has your black, your white, and your ground in it. That's the first type. The second is the same type of conductor with three wires in the end. It has your white, your red, your black, and your ground. Now, this is used for three-way switching. This is used for 120 and 240 volt loads. Um, it's, it's used for a variety of different applications, but this is basically what we use today. And then somebody decided to start adding all kinds of funky things. So your yellow Romex or your yellow NMD90 is known as 12 gauge. So it's one size larger than your 14. So the lower the number you go, the larger the conductor size inside of the wire. Now, a lot of this is used on commercial um, and it's used on commercial wood construction buildings. It's also used for kitchen counter receptacle wiring in our new code. So we use this for to wire our kitchen counter receptacles. A lot of places in the U.S. will just go ahead and use the 12-2 anyway, depending on the cost on their job. And then we have the orange wire. So the orange wire is a step size bigger again. It's 10-3 conductor wire. It also comes in 10-2. Um, and this is also a Romex. Uh, we call it an MD90, and this is this would be used for wiring larger appliances like a wall oven or a cooktop or a large hot water tank or um, a dryer. Most commonly, we use it for dryer, and we'll run this for generator receptacles inside of a house. Uh, I didn't. I don't want to really say a hot water tank because hot water tank we get into the heat X, but that's next. So then we get into the heat X, which is the red wire. So the red wire is specifically designed, the Romex or NMD, whatever you want to call it. It has a black and a red in it to indicate to electricians that it is 240 volt only. We do not typically use this for 120 volt wiring, even unless we're in a jam, uh, then we'll tape the white, uh, tape the red white to indicate that it's 120 and we have to clearly mark the wire. But as a general rule of thumb, because that's dodgy electrical work, we use this 12 gauge wire for uh, the purpose of electric heating, the purpose of anything to do with heat. So if it's uh, electric baseboard heat, a mini split heat pump that we wire in 12 gauge, uh, which is good for 20 amps, by the way, um, we will use this for the wire. Then we get into our larger size conductors. Um, this is actually a 6.2 red and black uh, NM D or a Romex wire and you can see inside there it's a stranded wire so anything over 10 gauge wire when you grow up through your wire sizes you're going to get into stranded anything under excuse me anything under 10 gauge um, so your your 12 gauge and your 14 gauge are going to be solid your 10 12 and 14 
So, in addition to that, we have what we call uh, a number six equivalent, and this comes in this comes in a uh, a copper conductor, the six three copper or a six three new all, and a new all is basically an aluminum conductor. So we are allowed to use anything over number eight here in Canada. I don't know what it's like in the U.S., but here in Canada, anything over number eight, we are permitted to use this for subfeeds uh, or large loads, like a stove or a subfeed or a subpanel. So the reason we use this instead of copper is because it's about a quarter of the price of copper. So if you had a $400 piece of copper, you would have a $100 piece of aluminum or new all which makes us competitive. Now, a couple of key features about this wire, we need to use an antioxidant when we, when we put it in. And our inspection department requires us to check the lugs, torque the lugs twice because it is soft and it will, it will uh, come loose after time. So it's important that we have these connections really good for these, these wires. Now, um, a few other different types here. This is a service wire, and this is a piece of 250 KC mill, or what would be known in the U.S. as 250 MCM. And this is also a, an aluminum stranded wire. It's a RW90 XLPE, and we use it for service entrances. So this is what we use to bend in the big 200 amp services. You can go with copper, one size smaller, which would be three aught, uh, but that's not on this video isn't about wire sizes, it's about wire types. So uh, it's so much more expensive that we actually use this wire on all of our services. So it comes in white and it comes in black. So we'll have a neutral connection and then our two blacks. And even if we get into three phase, we'll tape it red. Some smaller wires. We have an RW90 here or an R90. Um, that we use, this is a piece of number six, comes in a variety of sizes, it's a stranded wire. That's not really focusing good, it's supposed to, but it's kind of small to focus. But anyway, that's stranded. And we use this for our ground plates and our ground rods. And this is for the earth bond for the hose that uh, connects everything together. So we use these between, again, for, for a bond, an equipment bond or ground. Here's a piece of blue wire, and this blue wire up here in Canada is Cat5. This comes in a variety of colors. It's rated for low voltage, um, and it's used basically for computer cables. It comes in a Cat6 as well. Sorry, correction. This is a Cat6 wire. Uh, Cat5 is now becoming a thing of the fast, uh, past. The difference between Cat5 and Cat6 is Cat6 is a little faster speed, and it's all in how it's coiled inside of the wire. So the wire we use, um, this is, would be for high speed internet or would be for a basic telephone. And it is rated for 300 volts. So there isn't even uh, examples where we use it for uh, doorbell wiring. Uh, when we get into low voltage wiring, that's a little bit different, but um, we use it for a variety of different uh, types of jobs on wood construction jobs. Then we have some green wire here. This is a stranded, not solid, a stranded 14-2. It just has two conductors in it. This is actually speaker wire. So we use this to wire homes uh, with speaker systems or intercom systems in them. This is also rated for 300 volt, but we usually run low voltage on this stuff. Now a couple other things that don't really relate to Romex, but are dry cables. This is now known what is called a piece of AC90. <coughs> Armored cable rated for 90 degrees. So this piece isn't. This is actually a piece of BX, and I wanted to show you this because it's old. So I don't know if a lot of you know or not, but the word BX actually was created by a guy in the Bronx. So they named it BX for a number of years until they switched over to a new type of grounded wire that has a separate ground in, which is what we use now. And that uh, is what we call AC90. This stuff is for dry locations only. And this is to mechanically protect the wire. So if we're below 1.5 meters or we're below five feet, if we're running along a wall, we can run it in this stuff and it is protected. Now, this is not to be mistaken for outdoor wire. This is indoor wire only. If you wanna talk about outdoor wire, 
we get into tech cable. So tech cable is basically the armored cable that I was talking about, but it has a rubber coating and it has a rubber coating on the outside to seal it. So we use this for a variety of different things. This actually is not a piece of, of Tech 90. This is a, what we call a piece of ACWU. And the reason it's called ACWU is it's, it's armored cable underground wet. And it's a piece of ACWU new all. So this has a version of aluminum, but it does come in copper. And the reason we use this aluminum, again, is because of the price. So for a piece of service, host service wire for say 200 amp underground copper, you are looking at about 12 bucks a foot right now. So it's as, it's as high as $36 a meter for a 200 amp wire. This in this kind of wire or the aluminum wire is about uh, three bucks a foot. So it's substantially less, when, especially when we're doing longer runs. Having said that, um, we usually have to upsize these wires, make them larger to allow for voltage drop over long distances. But the aluminum wire is easier to bend. It's rated for underground or wet or damp locations. And this is the stuff that we throw right in the ground or run up the side of the pole to your house. So there are a variety of other wires, but I'm not gonna get into them. I just wanted to basically talk about the Romex wire. Um, forgive me if I'm off with the dates a little bit. It's just the general area or number of years that these wires were established in. So I know I'm not 100% correct on the dates. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you will make some comments, but it's fine. I just wanted you to know the basic different types of Romex or NMD, we call it, uh, over the number of years that, that we have used. And we're still using the, um, the uh, soy-based uh, plastic covered Romex today. Um, how long it'll be like that before somebody else comes up with a different idea, I don't know. So that's what we use to wire a hose. I hope you uh, liked the video and I hope this educated you a little bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel um, and we'll see you on the next video guys. Bye for now.